Welcome back, Sethling here. And today I wanna to talk to you about piracy or more specifically into piracy. This is Super Mario World plus, Su sorry, Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World. This is a cartridge I've been using in a lot of my recent videos. And I'm gonna show you a speed run that I did to get to the anti-piracy screen. I of course have a legitimate copy of the game. I bought it off eBay for like $35. Um, but the game does include an anti-piracy screen. It's included in the game code and you can access it if you use arbitrary code execution. So this speed run will basically do that as fast as possible. So it's kind of interesting to think about anti-piracy way back in 1994, or whenever this game came out, 1996, somewhere around there. Um, but the way that it worked back then was that there were hardware devices called cartridge copiers that actually just physically interfaced with the cartridge and could download all of the code from the game. And so since Nintendo knew about this and obviously wanted to prevent piracy because that's you know what Nintendo does, they included some code that checks one thing that might be true if you're, if you're using a pirated copy of the game on a cartridge copier. And if it does, then it displays the piracy screen and you'll see that at the end of the speed run. So the way that it does the check is basically it writes one byte that is sort of past the end of the save RAM that's stored in the game cartridge. The game cartridge has battery backed RAM that stores all the save files. Uh, it's got, how much is it? What's hexadecimal 2000? It's like eight kilobytes or something of save RAM. And, uh, Basically, by writing one byte past the end of that, it actually wraps around and writes to the first byte of save RAM. And that's what it should do on a normal cartridge. But if you're using a cartridge copier, it might not present the correct amount of save RAM. It might have too much. And if it does, then writing one byte past the, you know, eight kilobytes or whatever it is that's normally on the cartridge will just write to the eight kilobyte and first byte, you know, it'll write to some existing save RAM instead of writing to the first byte. And so basically it writes to that out of bounds uh, spot and then checks if that, uh, that write appeared in the first byte of save RAM. If it did, then it'll play the anti-piracy screen. And that's how it worked. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> here you can see me doing arbitrary code execution stuff. This is power up incrementation. I've explained this in a bunch of previous videos, so I'm not gonna explain it again. The actual uh, ACE that I'm using to do this was uh, thanks to some research by Mally. Mally is the one who also found the Super Mario Brothers 3 ACE that we used in a couple of my recent videos. Mally also just had the idea to speed run this at all. Uh, the code, the arbitrary code to do this is actually really simple. You basically just need to jump to a certain spot in the game cartridge ROM that triggers the anti-piracy code. And to do that, we don't actually need to use shell code. We can, uh, like I've done in some previous runs, like for example, the current uh, credits warp ace, um, we can we can run that code just straight from the um, controller, the multi-tap, uh, the extra controller is held with like buttons clamped down. So it's just a, a jump to address 009600 uh, and that's it. And so I don't have to do anything with these shells here. I'm just gonna position Yoshi and then uh, get the screen scroll to a very specific spot as I collect this one up. And when I do, it'll trigger the ace, jump to that spot and it'll trigger the anti-piracy screen. You can't hear it, but the uh, the music actually fades out and it is just silent. Warning, it is a serious crime to copy video games. 18 USC 2319, please refer to your Nintendo game instruction booklet for further information. And so if you at home don't have a Nintendo ins game instruction booklet, I'm sure you can find it online somewhere. Hopefully the irony of that is not lost in you. There is no real point to the speed run. This is not like an existing category or anything. It's, there's no leaderboard for this and there, there probably never will be. Uh, this route uses multi-taps, which not a lot of people have. Actually only uses one multi-tap, but still, uh, I, I don't know that there's gonna be a lot of people interested in speed running this. <laughs> it doesn't, it's not really a completion of the game or anything. I just did it for fun. Again, it was Mally's idea to even, to even do this. So thank you to Mally for that and the route research. That's about it. Thanks for watching.